Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation is going to be discussing security. Um, earlier we had mentioned about 300,000 from a UNICEF report, about 300,000 kids had, of course, been killed in you know, the last uh, decade concerning the insurgency in the Northeast and, of course, in other parts of Nigeria. It also says about 1 million have also been displaced. But there's some... Um, you know, conversation, you know, that every now and then, you know, has crept up. Uh, and it, that is the differentiation between the Boko Haram sect, or basically the, res who, the persons who are responsible for these numbers and for the insurgency and the insecurity in northern Nigeria. There's the Boko Haram sect, there's the ISWAP, and of course, there's now the bandits, there's kidnappers, there's unknown gunmen, there's many of them. Um, we're speaking this morning with Yehoza Getso, who's a security analyst, uh, to share his thoughts on um, helping differentiate and identifying uh, these groups, you know, uh, better. Good morning, Mr. Getso. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for joining us. All right, um, Yehoza Getso, it's, um, we've dealt with the insurgency for more than a decade now in Nigeria. Um, and over time, in the last few years, we've seen the emergence of new groups. We've seen the emergence of new names with, you know, also varying degrees of atrocities against the Nigerian state. There's been those who have argued that some of all these people are really just offshoots of the same Boko Haram sect and are no different, uh, but, you know, have just been poorly named. Do you agree with that or would you say that they're truly are different groups from the Boko Haram sect um, that have committed these, you know, same atrocities against the Nigerian state? Yeah, uh, well, uh, both of them, the Boko Haram, Iswap, and Bandatri, they are all uh, insurgents in general. But uh, in, in, in particular, each of them have a different objective and they have no relationship. Even though at much later time, there were certain relationships which are probably I will discuss in as we move. There are certain emergence of uh, informal relationships in terms of their behavior and attitude, in terms of the way they operate. So now, let's take one after the other. Boko Haram is, uh, an, is, is, is a rebel, or is a terror group that uh, emancipated as a result of uh, the leadership of uh, 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 late uh, Muhammad Yusuf, who is a, a religious activist, or religious, uh, yes, you can call him a religious activist, but his activism has no base in Islamic perspective. Because I, I have read so much about uh, Islamic philosophy, Islamic political philosophy, and the Islamic uh, polit uh, polit uh, uh, de democratization, or whatever the relationship between what you may, whatever you may call it. So now, um, the, the Boko Haram uh, 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 happened, it, it come off as a result of, it's a kind of political stooge. Uh, one of the governors in the North East used uh, as a political thug. And um, later, when he dumped them, after uh, injecting a certain ideology in them, so they now pick up, uh, what is the meaning? The meaning of Boko is a Western education. So they hate, they don't like anything Western education, they don't want to promote uh, Western ideology and so on and so forth. Um, while the, uh, uh, the, the Iswaf, okay, the, the Boko Haram, uh, which uh, later after the killing of Muhammad Yusuf, we advised the government based on research and investigation we conducted, and um, we realized that there, there is need to have a shift in terms of rehabilitation, in terms of managing the situation, not until one Nigerian government became so relaxed and so adamant and are so careless uh, to have allowed the, 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 the alliance between the Boko Haram and other foreign and uh, internal uh, political forces, both political and administrative, which are yet to be ascertained. Who, even though we always refer to uh, the Minister of Information, La Mohammed's statement, uh, where he's saying that they know who are the finances and the leaders of the Boko Haram. That one, I leave it with him because I don't have a strategic, I don't have information from what he has, but all I know is that I know there is emergence of Boko Haram, which is aimed at shifting from Western education to, Isl to Islamization. Not really Islamization, in real doctrine of Islam, there is nothing like terrorism. There is nothing like activism. From the inception of what Islam is all about, uh, from what I have read, because I have been conducting research and studies 
on Islamic political system, Islamic studies, Islamic religion, Islamic theology, and um, uh, Islamic philosophy, and Islamic psychology, and the criminal psychology, uh, how Islam deals with criminal psychology, in the last 25 to 27 years. But up to now, I didn't see any relationship between Islamic, uh, Islam as a religion and the Boko Haram ideology. That is about Boko Haram. Now, Isof. Uh, Isof is, uh, is a spell out uh, uh, alliance uh, of uh, Al Qaeda and other multilateral uh, uh, um, uh, terror, uh, ter terror groups that have a different perspective and different mission of how they operate. All they are after is to, to take over the leadership of the world. Not only under Isof, it's a distribution of uh, 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 insurgents, uh, criminal or terror that have bilateral, regional, and uh, uh, international uh, network. So it has a network like in West Africa. You have a lot of uh, ISWAP members in Benin. You have them in, in uh, Algeria. You have, you have them in, in Niger. You have them in uh, Libya. You have them in Mali. And uh, probably part of them are expected to also be in Egypt. And they are also in the U.S. And they have made a lot of, they have a lot of relationship between uh, what is obtainable in terms of their operations, in terms of their philosophy, in terms of managing situations, and uh, in terms of how their doctrine uh, have a direct relationship with Al-Qaeda and other terrorists in the Middle East, in the Western world, and uh, also in part of the far, uh, far, 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 far Asian countries. Because I could remember that uh, during 2014-2015, uh, I, I was in, in Myanmar, uh, India, Afghanistan, and uh, 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 some part of other Asian countries, including uh, uh, Sri, Sri Lanka. Uh, and um, later, I came back to East Africa, where I visited Somali and uh, Ethiopia, so, and, uh, as well as part of the Southern Sudan, where I, where I conducted as a number of researches and investigations, and also conduct a, a comparative study to understand what this uh, 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 issue of and other and their relationship and link with the other Al Qaeda groups. So now uh, that is about the issue. Of, so there is a core relationship, a common relationship in terms of operational philosophy uh, between the Boko Haram and that of Issa, because they are all uh, working uh, on the doctrine of Islamic ter terrorism. That is their own perspective. But to be fair to Islam as a religion, there is nothing like terrorism, terrorism or activism in Islam. It's not part of the Islamic doctrine, but they hide under the disguise of Islamic struggling to, to, to have emancipation of Islamic leadership in all these countries uh, for them to have uh, their operations uh, succeeded or using it as a, uh, as a, as, as a kind of... Um, you can call it as a serene or as an anthem or so, whatever you call it. Now, coming into Bandatri. Bandatri, uh, before I go into Bandatri, let me quickly make a recast. Boko Haram, 99.9% .9 of the leadership of Boko Haram and the commanders are well educated. Many of them are engineers. Many of them are American. There are medical doctors among them. There are pharmacists. There are all sorts of professionals. There are art and social scientists. Most of them are graduates, and their leadership uh, uh, is also have a combination of even some uh, have a PhD qualification. But they tear their qualification and throw it away. For them, they have wasted their time and, uh, and intellect, so they now want an Islamic government to emerge. But that is wrong to Islam. Uh, that is my understanding from the 22 to 27 years research I have conducted and comparative analysis of Islamic theology uh, Islamic studies, Islamic philosophy, Islamic political concepts, and so on, and the Islamic civilization, and the history of Islam based on what I read. To be fair to Islam, there is nothing, uh, Islam will not accept Boko Haram, and will not accept the Islam. So that is a uh, Going into Bandatri, uh, the Bandatri is an activity, the Islam and the Boko Haram is mostly dominated, or uh, uh, their activities are dominant in the areas of northeastern part of Nigeria, and other countries alike of uh, Cameroon, Chad, Libya, and other countries, as I mentioned. And they have a base in United Arab Emirates. They have a base in, uh, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the Sahelian part of uh, uh, African home. And then they also have a direct link with Western Bloc and the part of Eastern Bloc in the Western Europe. So now, coming into Bandatri in Nigeria. Bandatri is an activity that has a long historical perspective historical antecedents 
which was overseen by Sardona, Tapa Balewa, Azukwe, and even the, the colonial and colonial administrators. Uh, because it happens as a result of the, uh, the lingering relationship, the relationship between the, 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 the nomads and others. Uh, uh, virtually, many people think that uh, Fulani are the uh, leaders. Yes, of course. There are a lot of Fulanis in the, in the activities of uh, banditry, in the activities of kidnapping, in the activities of what is happening, especially in the north central and uh, northwestern, uh, southern northwestern states. But notwithstanding, um, if you take it, 99.9% uh, .9 of these of them are illiterate. 99.9% .9 of the bandits in northwestern state and northeastern, uh, northwestern state and north central states uh, operating in Benue, Kogi, uh, uh, Nasarawa, uh, Niger, Kaduna, Ka Katsina, and uh, part of outskirts of Kano, and uh, to some extent, some part of Jigawa, uh, Zamfara, Kebi, Sokoto, and alike, uh, they are illiterate. 99.9% .9 of them, they cannot write and they cannot read. And they cannot even understand the difference between A and B. Even though they are very minute, based on my interaction and investigation, very minute, uh, not to up to uh, five decimal in a hundred, uh, that they can be able to understand the concept of Arabic notes. That is Alifun, Ba'on, Ta'on, and uh, so on. So some of them, very few and very minute in number. They understand the concept of Islam. Uh, uh, they, 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 are, they call themselves Muslim, but they are not even praying. They are not even praying. They are not even praying. They don't accept. They believe they are Muslim, but they don't have the knowledge of Islamic knowledge. So, and their operations is just to kill. There is no key objective, no key, uh, uh, no defined objective, no defined goal, no defined strategy. They um, they get arms through the arm importers and arm dealers. So, in in the correlation, the Boko Haram, the Iswap, and the Bandari. If you want to say that they have a correlation, yes, of course, they have a correlation because all of them have a bilateral and multilateral connections. Mm. That is one. All of them, uh, uh, they, they are determined to kill. All of them are determined to destroy. All of them are determined to detonate bombs and other things. Even though band bandits are not detonating bombs, but as time goes on, uh, they have obtained AA, that is uh, anti-aircraft uh, and other uh, sophisticated arms, RPG, PMG, and other dangerous arms and ammunition. They get it through the by relationship between the three of them. Of okay. course, there was a time I had an intelligence information of a meeting uh, that happened between the issue of the Boko Haram and the bandits, which happened within the vicinity of Kaduna State, uh, Niger State, as well as the Katsina State. That means it happens in the belt that link up these states around the Binungwari area, uh, Binungwari local government area in Kaduna State, some part of but, um, uh, Sabua, Tandume uh, in, in Katsina State, and uh, some part of Kagara in Niger State, and some part of um, uh, Sakaba in Sakaba and uh, part of Yawuri uh, Arijo in Niger and uh, Kebi State. So these are the lingering situation, and, 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 and at that time, I was able to mobilize those informations and share it with the, the, the national security operatives for onward actions, uh, even though um, the, the information, the privileged information I provided was neglected until when the meeting was conducted, uh, even though I was not at the meeting, but I had some uh, reliable information that the meeting for coordination and collaboration happens, but I did not have any information on the outcome of the meeting. But all I know is there is now a, a, a kind of correlation between the Boko Haram, the issue of the Ansaru and Bandatan. Okay, Mr. Getso, Mr. Getso, uh, right Mr. Getso, just a minute. You, you have tried to explain to us that there's a difference between Boko Haram, Iswap, and bandits. But many other security analysts would beg to differ. They, they believe that Bandits are just another word, another synonym for Boko Haram terrorism because they carry out acts of terrorism. Like you mentioned, they kill people, they destroy lives, they kidnap people. Those are acts that are synonymous to terrorism. So other security analysts say banditry is just a word, you know, that it seemed to be lesser, but really is terrorism and that it cannot be separated from Boko Haram. And the Boko Haram terrorist sect have actually pledged allegiance to ISWAP. 
So many people would say they are one and the same. I don't, I don't understand how you might want to um, separate them then. I have already separated them by their doctrine. I said Boko Haram and Iswab are Islamic activists or terrorists that believe in Islamization. But I have been fair to Islam that there is nothing like activism or terrorism accepted by the Islamic doctrine. Based on research, I conducted 25 to 27 years on Islamic theology, Islamic democracy and Islam, and the Islamic philosophy and how Islam deal with criminal psychology and criminal activities. Bandits, I said, and I said, Islam and Boko Haram, they're intertwined and they are educated. They are vast in Islamic education, and many of them are engineers, architects, civil engineers, engineers, uh, biotechnologists, uh, social scientists, uh, medical scientists. There are all sorts of professional experts that acquired, went through the university and obtained highest maximum qualification you may think of. Many of them have first class. Many of them have second class offer. Many of them have second class lower. But none of the bandits, I know all their leaders. I have interacted with almost all the leaders of the bandits in northern Nigeria. Direct interaction. And I want to, I am reaffirming to anybody. I'm a field-based researcher. Right now that I'm talking to you, I am at the downstream of the state of Zamfara, Katsina Sokoto, and Kebi. And uh, I am conducting a streamlined analysis of situation analysis of the impact of the operations or the new uh, rules that introduced by these uh, states of uh, Niger and others, Niger, Zamfara, Kaduna, and others. So I'm a field-based practical person. I want to confirm and affirm to you that none of the bandits leaders in Kasena, in Sokoto, in Kebi, in Zamfara, in Jigawa, in Kano, in Niger, in Kaduna can write A, and none of them can write B. And none of them can differentiate between A and B for you. All right, let's get so. Off. Let's get it very clear. But yeah. Islam and Boko Haram and Ansaru, they are well versed in Western and Islamic education. And most of them are professionals. I know many of them that are architects, many of them are engineers, many of them I know among the medical doctors who are operating within us. Okay, Mr. Gato. Thank um, you. Well, I think, you know, you've done very, very well in, you know, pointing out these uh, things. It's also, I think one of the things uh, that we've also struggled with is, is knowing who is responsible for certain attacks um, without them necessarily having to claim responsibility. Um, that's also one of the things that Nigerians have struggled with um, over time. Um, so can you help, you know, us, you know, with that regard? You know, how is it, e how is it easier to identify who might be responsible for certain attacks. Um, the attack on the NDA, for example, and other um, army formations that we've also heard about. Um, can, we, can we identify a group by its mode of operation? Is that possible? And you know, when army formations are attacked, can we simply point out and say, okay, this is very likely uh, Boko Haram or Iswap or just bandits? Um, is, is that easy to do by, you know, just pointing out from their mode of operation? The mode of operandi of their operations differs. Strategically, the Boko Haram and Iswaf direct their attacks on institutions. Institutions like mosque, like church, like uh, MDS, as you mentioned. So they are strategically focusing on that. Why the bandits? Their attacks, like I keep saying, 99.9% .9 of the attacks of the bandits, they attack the people they know. And the people they attack, they know them. And they are indigenous. Uh, uh, some of the Iswaf and the Boko Haram, some of them, to some extent, uh, uh, there is a combination of uh, uh, nationals, that is citizens and foreigners. There, is, there are few foreigners among the bandits, but they are not conducting operations in terms of attacks. Most of the operators, most of them that operate within the bandits' uh, uh, geographical terrain of North Central and Northwest, North, Southern Northwestern states, they are armed importers and armed traders. So like I keep mentioning, 
among this uh, uh, the, 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 the supply chain mechanism or, or the, the command of the channel of command in terms of su supply and operations, you have arm importers. M most of them, 99.9% .9 are foreigners. You have arm, tra uh, you have arm traders. 99.9% .9 are foreigners. You have, arm, you have arm distributors and arm transporters. 99.9% .9 are indigenous of Nigeria. And 99.9% .9 of bandits who are operating in Sokoto, they are indigenous of Sokoto. Those who are operating in Zamfara, they are indigenous of Zamfara. Those who are operating in Niger, they are citizens of Niger because they have been born there. And uh, maybe for certain reasons, they have settled there for a number of uh, 20 or more years. Likewise, Kaduna and all other states that you may think about. So their mode of operandi for bandits is to kidnap for ransom, to kill the villagers who have a, a, a kind of probably marital relationship, sometimes so many other reasons. That time may not permit me to explicitly uh, discuss it. But they are illiterate and their target is not institutions. It is in a very few situations, much later, after 2018, 2019, and 2020, up to 2021, much later, much, much later, uh, the, the, the bandits started attacking institutions like the military, uh, uh, military camp in areas where they feel threatened so that they can weaken the military to enable them, to, for them to have opportunity to be able to reach their, their target, which is the next community. So, but uh, strategically, Iswa, Boko Haram, and Ansaru, they are targeting the institutions. The institutions of government, the private institutions that, like universities, like what happened in uh, Greenfield University, the institutions in northwestern state and uh, northeastern state, even though at a later time, uh, the bandits also employ the strategy of attacking the institutions, but in a different way. Boko Haram, Isov, and Ansaru, if they go to institutions, they try to destroy it. They try to kill and detonate bomb. Uh, bandits, if they go to institutions, they try to kidnap students for ransom. So they're entirely a different group and they have no iota of relationship. Okay. Besides the only one meeting they had in the vicinity of Niger, so Niger Zamfara and uh, KB, uh, which I mentioned earlier. Okay, Mr. Ghetto, um, can we talk a bit about their recruitment methods, if they are different? Because we've heard and seen in the news sometimes um, some terrorist group, we don't know who they are, go ahead and they give people money, give them foodstuff, convincing them to join. We've seen others just go and kidnap and then they turn them, you know, as part of them. So is there any difference between their recruitment method also? Um, any difference in the age, you know, their recruitment bracket? Because we've seen some recruit children, some recruit adults. So any fundamental difference between um, Boko Ram Iswap and the bandits? Yes, of course. There is different strategy for recruitment for both of them. Boko Haram, Iswa, and the Ansaru, the way they do their recruitment is any community, if they attack institution, and the institution or if they attack community, whatever age, even the age of six. I met someone at the age of six among the Boko Haram in one community in Askira Uba, local government of um, uh, Southern Borno, uh, 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 as part of uh, 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 one of them, which is not up to, which is between seven and eight and six years. So I can tell you that anybody, any remainers after they kill, whatever they cut as a, they, as a hostage, they move with them and they train them, they mobilize them and they intoxicate them using drugs and other things to influence them to also buy into what they are and sometimes they force them. That is one. That is Boko Haram and Israel. But for the bandits, they were, their way of recruitment is different. Because most of their recruitment is voluntary. It is for those who lost their cutters or those who wish to join them. Because among the bandits, like I keep saying, it's less than 35 to 40 of Fulani that are involved in the bandati. 60 and above or thereby are not interested among the Fulani in Nigeria, are not interested, they don't have passion, they hate what their core uh, uh, um, uh, core people doing. They don't like it. So it's not every Fulani or every nomad that you see that is a bandit. 
is less is between the the, the 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 percentage of 35 to a maximum of 40 that are doing it so the way they recruit 99.9 percent .9 of the recruitment procedure is a volunteerism hmm. i am a nomad you kill my 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 father you go away you rustle our cattle and so on and so forth so what is the way forward for me i have a team of other guys who are my uh, my clan so i will sell out the rest of the remaining cow either two or three and then help them to help me uh, uh, join uh, ask them to help me to get ak-47 so if i have ak-47 you have ak-47 all of us come along and form a team and have a leader all right you also get so whereas boko haram and isob and ansaru is well coordinated well organized formal structure of educated and they have all sort of communication and understanding yeah. one thing that will interest you among these illiterates of a bandit if you see the way they dismantle and reassemble arms you will be surprised but if you write a and b and c and ask them what is this they will just be laughing at you they don't know what is a they don't know what is b they don't know what is c but what? among the Boko Haram yeah, so. uh, guys I interacted with, especially in the extreme end of uh, Askira Uba, Dikwa, uh, Mubi, Michika, Maiha, Madagali, and uh, some other part of Borno, uh, during the investigation and conduct of research, I have seen many who speaks much, much better English than I do. My first degree was in Arabic literature, and I speak Arabic much more than my mother's tongue. But I want to tell you sincerely and honestly that I have met many among the Isop and Boko Haram and Ansaru that speaks Arabic much, much better and understood it better than me. And they speak English much, much better than I do. And I met many of them who are graduate with a PhD, with masters. I even met somebody with a seven MSc hmm. at the age of 70, so. at the age of 62. So, so they are different. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Gatso, um I, I don't think anyone would have done a better job, um, you know, with this conversation. Oh, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank and, you. Um, you know, we would love to continue speaking with you to understand these things better. Thank you very thank much. Thank you for having me. Have At your day. convenience, anytime you can reach out to me. Thank you. Absolutely. So our next conversation would be about that presidential zoning in 2023, like we talked about. Stay with us.